Podcast 209. Let's uh, let's see if Chris jumps in here really quickly. So we've got an interesting uh, interesting game this evening. Looking forward to that. So, but we'll talk about a, a slew of things uh, once Chris jumps in here. So we'll see what's going on. We're going to get this thing shared out. There goes Chris. What's up? What's up? You doing all right, buddy? Yes, sir. Good deal. Good deal. All right, let's. Uh, I'm, I'm sharing out as we speak. So there's that. Let's see. There we go. Looks like everybody can listen to us. Everybody can hear. That's good. Okay. All right. Are you ready for uh, for me to fire this thing up? Come on. Let's do it. All right. Three, two, one. Welcome in. Winning Cures Everything Podcast 209. It is the Monday, April 2nd edition of the show. Um, today's show is brought to you, as always, by mybookie.ag, uh, the best online sports book with the best odds. If you're looking to put down some plays on tonight's national championship game, sign up at mybookie.ag with promo code WCE50. That is WCE50. That's a 50% deposit bonus. So if you've dropped in $200, you're getting a hundred dollars free to play with, and so go on and knock that thing out if you wanted to. If you want to knock it out for tonight's game, or if you want to put some on the Masters for this weekend, we got you covered. MyBookie.ag promo code WCE50. If you're watching on Facebook right now, go on and hit that little share button down there, right down in the in the in the bottom corner, bottom right hand corner. Uh, if you haven't already subscribed to the podcast, uh, iTunes, SoundCloud, any of your favorite podcast apps. On today's show, we're only really hitting on three topics, right? It's like three different sports. Um, we're going to do the Final Four breakdown, and then we're going to have a national championship game preview, uh, along with betting picks and, and all that good stuff. Uh, we're going to do the NFL quarterback draft class for this coming season. Uh, Jim Morris said something interesting last week that we want to touch on, so we're going to ask who we want to draft uh, and we debate whether or not uh, there's a single player in the NFL that would not be traded for Cleveland's number one, uh, number one and number four picks in this year's draft. Along with that, Major League Baseball is officially back. The Yankees' home opener was actually snowed out today. Uh, but Chris watched a ton of baseball this past weekend. He's going to give us his opinion on what to expect this season. I only watched the Cardinals play this weekend, so I don't have a, an idea for the whole thing. So, Chris, you're going to handle all that. I got um, it. Got it covered. Exactly. Like the show, as usual, is brought to you by winningcureseverything.com. Uh, get the latest news, great stories on the website, all that good stuff. Make sure and follow us on Facebook right here, facebook.com slash winningcureseverything, on Twitter at winningcures, or you can follow myself at GaryWCE on Twitter. You can follow Chris at Chris B. Giannini. There you go. All right, Chris, let's start off with the national championship game. Um, the Final Four was both entertaining and boring. Uh, you watched both games, right? I watched some of both games, yeah. I was watching okay. a lot of baseball, to be honest. There you go. There you go. Uh, I watched both games. Look, Loyola, uh, the team that showed up for Michigan from like 14 minutes until the end of the game in the second half was – Completely different than the team that showed up for the first uh, 26 minutes, right? I don't know what was going on. Loyola was up 41-31 to 31 in that game, and then Michigan went on a 38-16 to 16 route to end the ball game, and it was something to behold. It looked like Michigan wasn't even running plays to start out with, and then when they started after that, it was just you could tell who the better team was, right? <laughs> Well, that I mean, that kind of happened to uh, Florida State, too, right? Like, they started yeah. the game off. They hit seven threes in, like, three or four minutes. It was 21 to nothing. It was just like ball game. They just waited until the third quarter to do it here. Um, and, and it w when that they was Texas A&M. That was Texas A&M. A&M, that's right. That's right, it was. Yeah. But, but either way, when they go on those runs, nobody's beating them. Nobody. No, no. Now, Michigan, uh, it, when, when they start hitting shots and, and they're actually running plays, because that's the difference, right? Like, they run plays, they set screens, 
They like they move the ball on offense. When they do that, they are very difficult to beat. It's just you've seen it several times in this tournament where they haven't done it. Um, so they didn't do it for the first 26 minutes. But then, I mean, it, with Loyola, like it looked like the moment got a little bit too big for them at the end. Well, they just um, got out talented too. I mean, they just got outmatched. I mean, they yes, don't they don't have the dudes at Loyola that that Michigan has. It's just. Eventually, it was going to catch up to them. It caught up to them. They made a hell of a run. Yeah, they sure did. They uh, they kept this thing entertaining, and and that was that was fun to see for the duration of the tournament. Right. Um, so Michigan has made the national championship now, beating a 14 seed Montana, a six seed Houston, seven seed Texas A and M, nine seed Florida State, and 11 seed Loyola Chicago. The championship game will be the first time that they play somebody that's a bigger seed than them in the whole tournament. That's pretty impressive for a three seed. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Everybody well, around look, them got just kneecapped. If, if you look at them from the second round on, yeah. the seed kept going up. It was six seed, seven seed, nine seed, 11 seed. That's right. Like, that is, that's an incredibly lucky run, right? So, and, and a lot of people would say that they probably should have been beaten by Houston. So That's right. It took Houston know. missing two free throws and one of the craziest Hail Marys we've ever seen in basketball. You got that right. All right, let's talk about Villanova. They uh they jumped out to a twenty two to four lead uh early they did, in that ball game. They did what they have done to systematically every team in this tournament. Yes. Have they trailed Other than the whole Texas tournament, Tech. really? But Texas yeah, Tech they I played mean, like uh, crap, but they still beat them by fifteen. They still dominate what? the game. They all right. So West Virginia was leading them by like five at one. Yeah, that's that's right. Round. I forgot. Yep, that's right. But but I mean, within a minute and a half, they were up five. Yeah, it didn't like, it take was a ten zero run and took no time whatsoever because you you hit a couple of threes, you get a couple of easy baskets off turnovers, whole thing gets swapped. So it, look, they hit eighteen threes. That is a Final Four record. It would not shock me if they hit eighteen again. No. Like the majority of their of their shots in this entire tournament have come from three. They've been doing they, it all year. They've dominated this tournament from from pole to pole, man. Nobody has really scared them. No, not even close. Here is who they have beaten to get here. 16 seed Radford, 9 seed Alabama, 5 seed West Virginia, 3 seed Texas Tech, 1 seed Kansas. They beat they have, the maximum amount of seeds aside from they could have played an eight seed over Alabama. Other than they, that, they could have played a four seed over West Virginia. They could have oh, played a two seed over Texas Tech. But yeah, because they played a nine seed, a five seed, okay, a three a five seed, and a, three. and a one seed. Okay. Yeah. But but their seed kept going up, where you know Michigan's <laughs> it, it was different. It totally was different. Opposite. It, it didn't matter who they played, though, man. They were smoking everybody. And now, I've got two things okay. about Michigan making it to this game. One, did you realize that Michigan only has one basketball national championship ever? That was in 1989. And in football, they only have one national championship. That one was shared in 1997 with Nebraska since 1948. Does that surprise you at all? Uh, I don't know. I guess the, like the, the amount does, of media you just, attention, ass, you just assume yeah. that they're a they're a powerhouse in the football world. But I mean, are they really? I mean, they look. They have the most wins of anybody in college football, but it, there's no titles there. Like I, I, I was really surprised, and I felt like I should have known this, right? Because like I'm. I'm kind of a college football historian. Like, I, I pay attention to that stuff. But I, I had no idea that they had none between 1948 and 1997. Like, I knew when, when Ohio State won that last national championship, um, or that first one with Jim Trestle, that it had been a long time. Correct. But I did not realize that Ohio State was, like, the last one since, you know, the 80s. I think, I think Penn State, and they weren't even in the Big Ten at the time. Nope. So, I don't know. It's they they've got a huge conference, but there's not a lot of championships there. Uh, the other the other part of this, the Big Ten is zero and six in the basketball national championship game since Michigan State won back in two thousand when they beat Florida. Uh, does that surprise you? 
Not really. I mean, they've played some really – I mean, when you get to the national championship game, this is a really hard tournament to win, Gary. I mean, it's just yeah. it just is. I think some iconic teams have won. Like, Florida had that team that went back-to-back. And then, yeah. and then the SEC also has Kentucky. Other than that, like, we're not winning national championships, you know? I mean, I mean it's, it's pretty you're much, talking Duke, North Carolina, it's Florida, pretty much been Kentucky. The, yeah, the ACC. Um, and then Kansas has won. Like, we talk about how great of a conference, or how great of a basketball team Kansas is, how dominant they have been against the Big 12. They got, they got one with Self. Yeah, he's he's got the same amount as Cal Perry, but everyone assumes that he's a light years better coach than Cal for some reason. I, I never understood oh, that. I tell you this, Alan Boston, you know the the Vegas wise guy that that really focuses on college basketball. Yeah, he bets against Bill Self every opportunity yeah. he gets. It's a he great. He cannot bet. stand Bill Self's coaching. Well, so, I don't know that it's his. I can't stand his coach. I just know the outcome just doesn't seem to always go in their favor. But they're always a heavy favorite. I just don't I, – I, I don't ever want to put money on them. Yeah, I'm, I'm with you. I'm with you. Um, so, here's what we've got. Match up at 8.20 p.m. Central Time tonight on TBS, not CBS. This is on cable tonight. Villanova, a seven-and-a-half point favorite over Michigan. The total is 144.5. Um, do you want to give your prediction first? I'm going to take Michigan in the points. I don't like it because normally in these championship games, I like to bet the team that I think is going to win. Seven and a half is a lot. Michigan has been crazy. Um, I think it's going to be a closer game. And I actually, I mean, would I be shocked if Michigan won it? No. So if I get to start out, I was thinking this line was going to open at four to four and a half. It's three points bigger than what I thought. I got to take the dog. I got to. Look, so I hit both of my – both my spread picks yep. in the final four. Um, at this point, I'm playing with house money. That's right. I like Villanova here. I, I can't go against them the way that they've been playing. Oh, it's scary as hell betting against yeah. them. Right so now, I'm, I'm going to take the seven and a half. Yeah. So what what about the over? Like, are you actually going to play the over tonight? No, I probably won't. But if I had to, I would go over because both of these teams can hit threes. Yeah, it's it, the, I, I the over under is 144 and a half. Yeah, if both these teams shot in the 80s, if this game ended up 81-84, would it shock you? No, not at all. Because it wouldn't not surprise me, but it would sure as hell surprise me if this game ends up 68-65. They just score too much. Yeah, no, I, I don't I don't believe that. I don't I don't think Michigan plays defense as well as like Texas Tech. And and even still Villanova scored 71 with only hitting four threes. I was about so to say, it, even if they play great defense, Nova can score, man. You're not yeah. shutting those guys down. You can contain them, but you're not stopping them. No, I, I think I'm doing the over, over 144.5, yeah. and I'm taking Villanova at minus 7.5. I, I think they're probably going to win by double digits. I, um, that, that, won't, that won't surprise me either. I just – I had a line in my head. I usually come up with this. I get a line in my head before a line comes out. And if I'm way yeah. off, I'm wondering, am I off or is Vegas off? And I just felt like – Man, I'm, I'm three point difference. I could see this being a close game, and and we'll just see. But I and mean, if Nova, you're, if you're getting three possessions, yeah, yeah, it makes sense. Nova hasn't played a close game yet. Well, that's the thing. It, it, so Villanova, the closest anybody has been has been twelve points. That's right. So, and so that was I the don't worst believe... game they played. Exactly. I, I don't believe that. It... I think Vegas is trying to keep up with the number here. That's right. You know, a championship game, you wouldn't expect it. It'd be like a two-touchdown favorite in a college football national championship. Michigan Michigan also has a massive fan base, so they're not going to get buried on Nova no matter how good they've looked because Michigan no. does have a massive fan base. The Big Ten is a big conference. We talked about that. Uh, let me ask yeah. you a question. Who would you give the coaching edge to in this matchup? Wow, that is – that is an I, interesting. I uh, have I have gone back and forth. I put 130 miles on my truck today, driving, working, and I cannot <laughs> figure out for the life of me who I would give the nod to. This might be one of the most evenly coached national championship games well, we've look, seen. John Beeline, I think John Beeline is the better coach. I think Jay Wright is a great coach who has better players. Does that make sense? 
Yeah, I think we're discrediting Jay Wright's coaching ability because he's this handsome swagger dude that we think can just recruit and, and be a car salesman. That guy can still coach. I would probably agree with you if I had to say – who gets the check mark? It's Beeline, but it's not by a lot. No, and it's, I might, it's and very close. And I might change close. my mind. It could be easily convinced the other way by game time. Yes, I'm, I'm with you. I, I think, look, I really like I really like Beeline's coaching. I think yeah. he is the better coach. I don't think it's by much, but I think that Jay Wright has such a talent advantage here that the coaching won't make much of a difference. So, Justin chiming in. I appreciate that, Justin. Swagger dude. I appreciate that. <laughs> you're a good I always man. Always love the Facebook comments. Um, all right, so let's. Uh, so, so you're going with Michigan plus seven and a half to cover. <sighs> I'm only taking the points. We're both taking the over. I will. This will be the first time yeah, I haven't is. taken a dog and won't be betting the money line. I just I can't do that. No, I can understand that. I mean, it's money line's big though. I mean, if you take I know, it, you but, put a decent amount down. I know. I just don't believe. I think Nova's killing people. Yeah, that's exactly how I how I feel about it. Uh, let's move on to the NFL draft. All right, uh, we're, we're going to talk about this year's quarterback class, and I got to read a few things to you. All, all right, right, hit me. So, so just so that I can get you in the right mindset. Uh, last week, Jim Mora goes on the NFL Network and said this: because of fit, I would take Sam Darnold at one if I were the Cleveland Browns. I think he has that blue-collar, gritty attitude. I think his teammates will love him. I think the city will love him. He'll say the right things. He'll come in and represent well. I think he kind of represents what Cleveland is. All right, now, obviously, his quarterback for the last three years is Josh Rosen, who is also at the top of the quarterback boards, right, for the NFL draft. Correct. Well, Mora talked to Sports Illustrated's Peter Keene over the weekend, and this is what he said about it. He said, uh, uh, let's see, Mora understands the tornado his words created, but he stood by his point that Darnold and his don't worry, be happy ethos, quote, my words, not his, uh, would be a better long haul fit for a Cleveland team that likely will take a while to win. I put it in the context of fit, Mora told me. He strongly emphasized the word fit in our conversation. He said, Darnold has the underdog mentality that I think will fit so well in Cleveland, a franchise that's really been down. Of his own quarterback, Morris said, Josh, I think, without a doubt, is the number one quarterback in the draft. He's a franchise changer. He's got the ability to have an immediate impact. His arm talent, intelligence, and his ability to see the game and diagnose the game is rare. He'd come to the sidelines after play, and it was uncanny. He could right away say exactly why he made every decision. He needs to be challenged intellectually so he doesn't get bored. He's a millennial. He wants to know why. Millennials, once they know why, they're good. Josh has a lot of interest in life. If you can hold his concentration level and focus only on football for a few years, he will set the world on fire. He has so much ability, and he's a really good kid. Now, I look at this as Mora thinking that Josh Rosen is annoying, right? So, like, we're both parents. We both get those why questions. And for football coaches – they do the same things that parents do. It's it, it, somebody asks why, easy. Like, because I said so. Like, you do what I tell you to do. Like, don't question why, all this kind of – so he would need to be in a situation. Um, part of me is wondering if he is saying this, one, so that his guy doesn't get stuck in Cleveland, or if he's saying this because he really believes it. You know? can, I, can you answer a question for me? How in the world yeah. can the quarterback that played at Southern Cal for four years or three years, however long Sam Rock, come out and say he's an underdog kind of guy? It's not like he was Drew Brees that played at Purdue. <laughs> what the hell are you talking about? It's a good fit. He comes from Southern California. He literally grew up across the street from Rosen. How, yeah. how in the hell could one guy be a perfect fit and the other guy – not because one guy just seems like he doesn't give a damn. That's that's total horse crap to me. Regardless of how you rank the quarterbacks, the argument is bunk. It's just it's just stupid. If you think right, now, that a guy from give Southern me, California that's never played in weather below 
50 degrees in his life, okay, is going to be a great fit. <laughs> but the other guy that is smarter than him, that is better at reading defenses than him, and probably has a better arm than him, the other guy is not a good fit who grew up in the exact same weather. I need to understand what you're talking about because they're yeah. both millennials, all right? One guy, the way he sounds like one guy's a meathead and the other guy's an intellectual. Well, you know what? In my history of watching the greatest quarterbacks of all time, give me the intellectual over the meathead. I, I just take always hire smart. It's just so stupid. That That is dumb by Jim Mora. I I can somewhat understand where he's coming from as far as don't don't talk about meathead, but from like a personality standpoint. Yeah, I'm wondering if because you know Rosen is one of those that it, he had these problems at UCLA, right? The team around him wasn't great, so he was just kind of always. But but hang whatever. on, what if what if those offensive coaches weren't that great? Maybe they didn't challenge him because. And how many great defenses did he play? Not many. No, I mean, you're you right. Think, you you're think right. he's not going to be challenged in the NFL? Are you kidding me? It's going to be the oh, most complicated, you. difficult thing that he's ever done in his life. If the guy likes a challenge, Cleveland is the best place for him. It's going to be hard. Yeah. I no, just, I'm, I'm with I don't, you. I don't buy the argument. I'm not saying Rosen's the guy, but I think the argument is stupid. I think what Jim Mora said is just, doesn't make sense. And him trying to explain it makes it even worse. Now, tell me this. It, is there ever, like, is it okay for a coach to not back his guy? Like, yeah. Surely, well, this now he's come, a, if he's wanting he's to get back member, into coaching, but I don't this would end is. up biting him. Uh, well, not, so? if he goes, not if he goes. He ain't going back to college, okay? So okay. we're not worried about that. Would it affect him going to the NFL? No. He's now got a new job, and his job's to be honest. Pete Carroll threw – uh, Sanchez under the bus, not ready. Shouldn't be coming out right now. You know, that, it's just the yeah, way Brian it is. Brian Kelly did the same thing with uh, Deshaun Kaiser. That's right. That's right. Not ready. And, and guess what? Both of those guys, dead on right. But yep. all they said was they're not ready. They didn't say the other guy's a better fit. You want to talk about a best fit for Cleveland, you talk about the underdog guy, Josh Allen, who played in cold weather and he's got the big, strong arm to get through the nasty weather in, in the Midwest, okay? That, that's, a, that's a good fit. Now, is he the best quarterback? We're having two different conversations, all right? Yep, so, I agree. So let's, so let's rank them. Who would you take out of these guys, not your Cleveland, not your anything, you're the GM of a team, and you need a QB? We going one through five? You got them, yeah, you got them locked up for five years, Sue. On a rookie contract, I would take Darnold one. I would take Rosen two. Then I'd take Mayfield. Then I would take Allen, and then I would take Lamar Jackson. Why would you do that? Why, give me your give me your reason for that. All right, on which one? Or just all of them? Why Why is Sam Darnold better than Josh Rosen to you? What have you seen from Sam Darnold that makes him? And what is Josh Rosen's? Um, knock, I guess. Josh Rosen's knock to me is the propensity to uh, not show up, right? Like, if if the team starts losing, I don't know that I can trust him to come out and give a effort, right? I don't know that his teammates are going to like him because there was a lot of rumblings at UCLA, which I don't know all of it, but a lot of rumblings at UCLA about guys not liking his uh, demeanor, right? Um, he didn't try and lead that team. He, I don't know. At Darnold seemed like a natural-born leader, right? Like that just, that's how his personality comes across. I uh, just, I don't get that. I don't Baker get Mayfield? that. Baker Mayfield? Hey, I, I could be completely wrong. So I'm in, one, in, one, in one game, we have a one-game sample size. The, the Rose Bowl where, where Sam Darnold looked like a leader, looked like a damn soldier. Outside of that one game, show me where he has put that team on his back and said, this is mine. Y'all follow me. No, no, no. For, forget even – forget that. Uh, I'm talking about over the course of two years. I'm not talking about one game based on, like, play, 
right? Because everybody's had uh, not. But what has he done to that. show you he's a good leader? Uh, everything else that goes into it, all of the stuff. Uh, his teammates like him. Uh, they all voted him captain. They, I mean, nice. my gosh, Josh Rosen wasn't even voted a captain on his team. So I get that. That's fine. So, and that's that's another thing with like Baker Mayfield, right? I that that might be a knock on Rosen. That might be a knock on Rosen, but I don't know that that's a credential in itself because I would bet you there's less than 3% of quarterbacks that are starting quarterbacks in college football that are not captains, okay? I think that says Agreed. more about the people that are not than the people that are. Okay, I can understand that. But that, that's one of the things that I'm pointing out. I like Darnold's throwing motion. Um, I mean, he's got a little bit to work on. Uh, Rosen is a better, like, just passer. Yeah. But my God, like Hackenberg and all these other guys were better passers. And, I mean, they're, they've done nothing. They're, they're, they end up screwing with their mechanics so much when it was just fine, right? Um, Justin brings up here. McKinnon, first off, uh, mentioned Darnold, Rosen, Allen, Mayfield, and Jackson are the only first-round options. Uh, there's a few other quarterbacks that'll go later, but they'll most likely be backups or non-draftees. Uh, I agree with that. That is a question I'm going to ask you in just a minute. Uh, Justin uh, says none of them. Uh, he's sick of quarterbacks going so high. Bring back linemen, running backs, and D-line. Well, we, linemen, have, we have talked about that. Linemen will never go again. Offensive linemen in college are terrible. None of them are yeah. pro-ready at all. Everyone that has been taken well, in the last couple of years are a bust. Some, some of them have been okay. Right, some of them have been not fine, top takes, five, top three pick overall. It takes time for them to get adjusted, right? Well, you're not, like, yeah, you're not, do, you're not doing that with your number three pick overall. You're yeah, just not agree. You, you're not getting projects. So I'm going to tell you mine. Yeah, give I me like, give me your top five. I I am growing. The more and more and more I read about and watch watch stuff on uh, Josh Rosen, I, I would I think I would say I think he's the most pro ready today. I have been high on Allen the whole time. He's been the guy I've wanted. I think he's got a big arm, and and he's got accuracy issues. All these guys have flaws, though. So I'll take a guy that I can work an accuracy accuracy issue out. Sam Darnold, you know who Sam Darnold reminds me of? He reminds me of Jay Cutler. He just looks like he does not give a damn out there <laughs> at all. I don't want Jay Cutler on my team. I don't want Jay Cutler right. on my team at all. That's what I, can I see that. when I, I don't see a leader. I don't see a dude that gets anybody fired up or that anybody's following. And all those boys from Southern California say, oh, well, we'll follow. He's our captain. Man, whatever. You guys don't know what life's like. You, Y'all have you don't no see a little, clue. You, you don't ahead. see a little cutler in, uh, in Josh Rosen? Uh, no, because, I mean, I guess you could because they're both – Neither neither one of them get so a lot of emotion or anything like that. I, yeah, I don't know. I I I like smart, but I've made that very clear. I think if you can figure it out mathematically in your head, you can go out there and make it happen. That's that's what okay. I like. And then I would take a chance on Lamar Jackson after that because I like experiment. Yep, Chris, I lost you. And then you. Baker Mayfield. Look, man, he he might be the best one out here, but I I don't want him. Okay. So your internet okay. is jacking okay. up again. Um, let's. It is it well? It, I, I lost you for just a minute, so I'm not sure exactly what we missed. Um, no, that's all right. All right. Look, I've got five guys that I want you to go through and tell me if there's a chance that any of them in the long haul in the NFL could be better than any of these top five. Okay. Perfect. All right. I've got, and first off, Justin chimes in, Baker or bust. Um, and then Cameron says, pretty much all I see in Rosen is color. That was my point out of the whole thing. His demeanor. I just don't, I I, but I, I don't see how Sam Darnold's any different. I swear to God, they're the same player, except Rosen's got a better arm. I don't I, get it. I don't know, man. I, I, I don't like, get I it. See, I have seen Darnold fired up. I right. saw him like one it. game fired up, one game, and that was an epic yeah. all-time classic of a game. And that's the same game you saw. Oh, that's true. That's true. All right, here are here are the five. Give me the names. five. Okay. 
These are the like the next ten. The next guy, Mason so, Rudolph. Mason Rudolph. Yes, I think Mason Rudolph could. Be. Would I be shocked if Mason Rudolph's the best quarterback that comes out of this draft? Nope. All right. Next one up for me, Riley Ferguson. Uh, I think yeah, I, I think he could be good. All right. I've got Chase Litton from Marshall. I don't he's, know. He's uh, a six foot six guy. He's you know Marshall did pretty well this year. You know what um, I do like, but Luke, here's here's the thing. I like guys that come from smaller schools. We we have talked about that too. Like I want somebody with a chip on their shoulder. Oh, there's a lot of them in the NFL. Cameron, a don't give me that crap. I watch a lot of USC games in college football. <laughs> there aren't a lot of good games to watch. So if they're playing a good game on the weekend, I'm watching it. That is true. That is true. Uh, Luke Falk, Washington State. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. I like I like the coach he came from. Well, but has I mean, is there really anybody that has come from that type of system? And done well, I don't, well? I don't know. The Chiefs just traded away a, a Pro Bowl quarterback to put one of those guys in the starter. Yeah, no, that's true. Uh, we haven't seen exactly what he can do yet, but he, he looks right. promising. But but that's um, it. And then the next one up is uh, Mike White. It's uh, uh, from probably. Western Kentucky. Yeah, I'd, I'd probably not. Jeff Brom guy, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah. So, um, let's jump into this, all right? We'll, we'll, we're still talking NFL. Yeah. The Ringer had an interesting topic. You texted me. Yeah. You said uh, that the Giants don't really have Odell Beckham on the market because nobody would trade two first-round picks for a guy in today's that's not, market. That's not what I said. That's not what I said. I all said right. – Explain I said, you can't say that he's on the market if if you're saying we'll we'll take two first round picks for him because I believe every player in the NFL if the Browns are called up and said well you get one in four but we want X I think every player in the league would be sold. Okay. Okay. I at least think there would be a conversation and and I, I think I think that'd all be sold. I think the only person that might not be sold might be Watson because they the he was so good and then he got hurt and they got such a small sample size of what they saw from him. Okay. So there so out of the entire NFL. Out of the entire you, NFL. You think the only player that would not be traded for the number one and number four picks correct. would be would be Deshaun Watson. 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 That's it. That's it. There's nobody else. You don't – like, all right, obviously Tom Brady, age is an issue. Too old. Too old. Too old, and they would obviously trade him. Drew Brees. Correct. Correct. Too old. Too old. He's a, he's a two-year dude. You wouldn't take a guy for now, for five years? Now, when I, when I posted this on Facebook or whatever, the responses that I got were Carson Wentz. And, and I it, told I mean, you, it was like everybody. The day, yeah, you saw the same the day, thing that I did the, where everybody was saying Carson Wentz. But hang on. Yeah, but the day after the Super Bowl, we're not even talking about two first-round picks. The day after the Super Bowl, I told you I would call Cleveland and I'd tell them I want a King's Ransom for Wentz right now because what they're going to do is they're going to mess up and they're going to trade away Foles because we think Foles is not as good as Wentz, all right? And then when they trade away the Super Bowl MVP and Wentz starts out two and two or one and three, they're gonna up the city of Philadelphia is gonna burn that place to the ground. Yep. They're gonna burn to the ground. You took our number they took our MVP. We've never won a Super Bowl, and the Super Bowl MVP now plays in Arizona. And <laughs> what the hell are we doing? So I would have traded no, I'm, I'm with you. the day after the Super Bowl, I'd have been on the phone and he'd have been sold. So you give me two first round picks because you already got foals. They're even right, better. See, now Justin jumps in with Wentz. He said Wentz, Watson, nope. probably the only nope. two. And then and Wentz, you're not buying. the other knock on the other knock on Wentz is that he's coming off a knee. So that's an unknown. That is a exactly. totally unknown. You have no what idea. if he's not the same guy and you just won a Super Bowl without him? What would happen if you put Chubb on the one side of that badass defense and and uh and Bar Saquon Barkley in the backfield of that offense, holy crap. Hey, you Cam just won jumps the Super Bowl in. and you got crazy stronger. Cameron brings up Russell Wilson. Russell Wilson's believe, about I to get paid. Traded, I think he'd second. be traded in a heartbeat. Because they know to win a Super Bowl, 
you got to have a cheap ass quarterback. And Russell yep. Wilson was a cheap quarterback, and now he's got to get paid. Yep, which means you can't get. Well, all right, so all right, Justin jumps in. He says you don't get rid of Wentz or Foles. Oh, that's so dumb. Like, you can't keep both of them. That's a that's a the Patriots should yeah. have kept Garoppolo problem. Like, yeah, in yeah, a that's, perfect that's world, but that didn't work. Yeah, that didn't work at all. Well, they've got Foles on a one year contract, right? That's right? And they've got him for cheap. So I can understand that, right? Yeah. Like that's if you've got Foles for cheap and you've got Wentz for cheap, then no. But they're both worth so much right now that not trading them is almost terrible, right? Like, you got yeah. you got to get something for them. I wouldn't be surprised on draft night if we see Foles ended up going elsewhere. Well, I, I think like that's I, a mistake. If I'm the city of Philadelphia, they're going to be pissed. I agree. So I agree with you. And McKinnon talking about all these older quarterbacks, man, they got deals that are two or three years. Breeze will not be playing in three years. Eli Breeze? Manning will not be playing in three years. Brady probably will. Brady keeps renegotiating his deal a couple of, you know, if it was any, if it was anybody else, Brady's a, an enigma because he's the greatest of all time. They're not yeah. going to ever let him go. But, but that's, that's a, that's a bad business deal because but it, you don't want to change what you got. If the Browns offered number one and number four to New England, do you think they would trade Brady yeah. right now? No, I could, I could totally. No, now, you don't think so. But, but I, but I get. No, I don't think they will. But I'm telling you, Robert Kraft won't let it happen. Robert won't let it happen. But it's a bad move. I think they should. I think, and there's no way Cleveland would do that. You wouldn't trade two guys that are going to be rookies, and you can control for cheap for five years that are blue chip talents for a guy that's yeah. 41 years old. No, nah, you you don't you just do like do the it. only reason you do that is if you're like the Jaguars, and yeah. you've got a team that's built right now, and all you need is a quarterback. Yeah. So that's so, that's how I would see that one. Uh, yeah. McKinnon, so anyway, it, so I, it's I McKinnon's it full post. Interesting conversation. Yeah, McKinnon's post said Manning, Brady, Breeze, and Rivers have two to three years left, and with only a handful of great quarterbacks in the next few years of draft picks, I wouldn't be surprised if two or three of these teams pick up a QB this draft to develop. Uh, oh, okay. all right, so, and then Justin jumps in uh, saying, saying that, yes, one and four for Brady as a Pats fan, I'd do it in a heartbeat. It, yeah. I, I think most people yeah. would do that. Yeah. No, I, there's nobody. I'm telling you, when they said two first-round picks and he's for sale, everybody in the league is for sale for two first-round picks. I as mean, long I'm as they're good to... first-round picks, right? Uh, not well. We're, we're, I mean, we're not talking New it. England's first-round picks, right? That's right. If New England came to you and said, I want Deshaun Watson for our first two picks, you're not taking number 31 this year and 29 for next year. Like, yeah. that ain't happening. That's a different conversation. <laughs> but, but the, you know, they got to be legit picks. But I just I, – I think everybody in the league is for sale at that price. So, I, I and, and, and I think it was uh, Kevin Clark who brought that up in the ringer. So I want to credit him for this original idea. But, yeah, that's that's kind of a – yeah, I'll sell him. I mean, you know, my house is for sale yeah. right now. If you showed up with 300 k it's yours. I'll there pack my stuff and be out tomorrow. <laughs> it's not I worth it. it. But if you'll pay it, awesome. Yeah, no, exactly. Uh, all right, let's uh, – we, we've been on for 38 minutes now. All right, let's roll. Let's go ahead and uh, and move on to the last topic of the day. Look, Major League Baseball. You Opening watched day. this weekend. I watched I did a lot. not. I watched now, a lot. You are going to take lead on this. Okay. Tell me what you know. What I'm going to tell you the for? things that were just cool to me that stood out that I thought were neat. The okay. very first pitch of Major League Baseball this season, Ian Happ for the Cubs playing at the uh, at Miami, Derek Jeter's first year, uh, year as, a, uh, as an owner, first pitch of the game, Ian Happ, yard. Don't know that that has ever happened in Major League history before. The first pitch out of the park. Pretty exciting way to start the season off. Chicago White Sox, they got to play. They said, look, we're no scrubs over here in Chicago on the other side of the field, uh, the city. Um, Matt Davidson's his name. is a second-year guy. He's a DH. Hit three home runs on opening day. That was pretty exciting. Uh, the biggest free agent signing of the year was Gian, 
Giancarlo Stanton to the Yankees. He opened up with two yep. homers. So it's yep. pretty opened fun. Up. Hey, let me let me ask you this. Okay. Um, so the Marlins, who you know, it, that's that's Derek Jeter. They opened up with two wins this weekend. Yeah, they went two now, and two in the first four games. They weren't. They were an underdog in every game. Well, they're going to be that an underdog. Surprising you? No, it's baseball, man. It's baseball. It just it just happens, right? This is not basketball, and this is not football. The worst team in the league is still going to win fifty games. Okay? okay, they just played too many damn games. It's just. Well, I didn't it know if this was is. like a precursor to something that we need to start paying attention to. No, they, they, no, they nothing to see here. The farm. They they got rid of everything. Everybody. No, they let them so, all go. Okay, but it, but you don't expect this uh, this run of success to last. No, Cameron's right. They'll be terrible. Them, I know there's 500 right now. Them and the Padres are already mathematically eliminated. Just <laughs> and the Reds, gone. They're not going to be there. Nothing's going to okay. happen. Uh, I'll tell you one of the most interesting things, and you kind of give me your input. I'm going to set the scenario up. We had our first major coaching slash managerial, because they don't have coaches really, blunder in, uh, in baseball. Gabe Kaplan, I don't know if you heard about this or not, Kapler, um, the manager for the Phillies, this is his first year there, went out okay. in a game to take a pitcher out, and he was asking for a lefty. He didn't have a pitcher warming up in the bullpen at all. Oof. Okay? <laughs> okay, I did not hear about this. Pretty big mistake. Pretty big mistake. The yeah. Braves, uh, I think it was against the Braves – Yes, yeah, it was against the Braves. The yeah. Braves manager got furious, got thrown out of the game because the umpire allowed the guy to still get his warm-up pitches in. Now, it was a blowout game. The Braves smoked him. But, but uh, he allowed the, uh, the relief pitcher to get, his, to get his warm-ups in, even though it's against the rules. He's not supposed to. The, manager, the umpire, after the game, came out and admitted, look, the manager made a mistake. But I wasn't about to allow the safety of the pitcher to be put in jeopardy. He goes out here and he tries to pitch without being properly warmed up. He blows his arm out. He ruins his career because his manager made a mistake. He said, uh-uh, it ain't worth it. It was my decision on the field. I stand by my decision. I know I knowingly went against the rule. I stand by. What do you think about that? How do you feel about that? I think that I'm okay with that. I don't think it changes a whole lot. You know, like, I, okay, the guy goofed up and didn't have him warming up. But, but I don't believe that it changes the game, whether he gets, you know, 15 extra pitches or not. Right? Like, does, yeah. does it matter? No, I'm, I'm okay with it because I think, I think Cameron said right call. I completely agree with the, with the umpire. Because the game was kind of out of hand, it, did, it wouldn't bother me too much. I want to know if this was a tight ball game and a game that mattered and you've got a top-tier closer coming in to close the game out. I think – I don't want to put that closer at risk, but what I do as an umpire is say, this guy can't pitch. So you brought him in. He can't pitch. You get somebody else up to pitch, and your second option is now the pitcher, and I'll give him all the time in the world. Yeah. But I'm not allowing – I'm not allowing you – to have an opportunity to win this game because you made a mistake. I wouldn't exactly. allow that, and, it, and it's kind of strange. Um, so, yeah, Cameron knows what can happen if you get thrown out there too early and you're not warmed up. Exactly. Your, your career's over. So I wouldn't want somebody to get hurt, but I'm also not allowing you just to all of a sudden, oh, shit, I forgot to get Chapman up warming up, and we got to close this game out. Let's get the best closer in the game up. No, no sir. It's a, you're, no. you're not bringing them in cold. You made a mistake. Guess what? I'm not going to let does, him get hurt. But it does make me question. Like, it, do you think maybe that should be a rule in baseball that you cannot bring in somebody that's cold off the bench to pitch? But then, what do you do if you don't have anybody warming up and you've already pulled the guy you've got? Do you make them just stick with the guy they've got? Like, yeah. Are, you can't make th that. Would be a better one. There you go, I, Gary. I think you stick with that because, like, the, the, it, the pitcher that's the, already in, unless he's injured, has to stay in. The, the manager has to be on top of having somebody warming up. The, uh, like you, how you it happened, have, I do not know. How, you how, got that's me. That's a fireable offense. 
I agree. That is. Uh, I know it's only like his third game managed him. It looks like he might be in over his head a little bit. That's a got to go situation. Uh, McKinnon brings up. He said, "Chris, uh, give me your two way too early picks to be in the World Series, if you would." Oh, oh, uh, and we know it's way National too early. League is We're where not going to struggle. No, no, that's okay. My my American League picks. I am sold. First week of the season, I feel so great. I first team. I'm going to go with my Red Sox. One of these two teams will represent the uh, – feel very comfortable about that. The National League, yep. I want to hold just on. give right. the so you the Dodgers because I Hold on, like you the said Dodgers. the Red Sox and who? Um, and the Astros. The Astros. Go for the a Astros. repeat. Okay. Houston. I love, okay. love, love Houston this year. Um, you know what? I'll give you for the National League – I like the Mets uh, pitching a lot, a lot. I think I think as I, long as I, they're healthy, out there a little bit since I went chalk. I'm going to give you the Mets. That's, the Mets team, are going to give me a second one else. to fall back on. Yeah, I'm going to go with another one to back up them. Uh, oh, and Nationals. I'll go a little chalky there. Those would be my two picks that I would go. Okay. With. That's uh, so the Nationals. Um, I, that that one's interesting because they haven't they hadn't done it yet, right? They've been picked like every freaking every year. Every year. And they get out in the first round. They can't even make it through the first round playoffs. Yeah. That's, Cam, Cam's uh, got the Indians and the Nats. Uh I I went against my tribe just because I have never had more fun watching a team play like I have the Houston Astros. I am not a Houston fan. I'm not from there. I have no connections. I'm not trying to act like I am. I love watching that team play baseball. Jose Altuve they are a lot is of my fun. favorite player to watch. And they're they're really, really good. I mean, Verlander they, is – They are awesome. Verlander's Keich- on top of his game right now. Yep. Keuchel's got a big beard. Got to love that guy. <laughs> I, you know, George I Springer. Yeah. Yeah, George, George Springer's one of my favorite players. Carlos Correa. They're just – they're awesome. My boy Alex Bertman from, from LSU. No, it, they're, they're – they're a lot of fun to watch. Give me, uh, give me some more stuff. Anything else from this weekend that was, uh, that was interesting? I know we, oh, we a... interrupted you there with, uh, nope. with no, some of those okay. questions. No, 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 no. I made it kind of easy. Um, I'm just trying to come out with uh, fair enough. Oh, being a Cards fan, dude, I didn't like the Cards last year. I know the injuries got to them. They made no moves to get any better. They are the exact same team they were last year. I, I just, yeah, I don't, I don't I was like them. I super disappointed that. With just them, just we're gonna stay pat, and this is the team we got. So, um, I'll tell you this: I, I really like the Mets this year. I mean, they looked really good against the Cards. I don't know what that says about if, either one of those teams. If if but, Syndergaard and Degrom can stay healthy, they are going to be scary. Those two boys well, can. Throw. On top of that, it looks like they got their bats back. Like yeah, it looks they, like the Mets can finally hit. Opening day, uh, the Cardinals pitched Martinez. Martinez is a bad mamma jamma. And the Mets yep. worked him. I mean, he was yep. out in like three, three and almost a third, you know, maybe four innings. Didn't get very deep at all. And, uh, yeah, the Mets, if they can swing it, they're going to be dangerous. You so, got that right. You got that right. All right, anything else you uh, you want to add in? Uh, no, man. I'm just uh, – I love baseball. I'm excited it's here. And uh, – <laughs> That's – I'll be I'll be going out to uh, the Redbirds opening game next uh, Tuesday night. So, oh, and I've got to talk to you about this. Uh, I think, well, I'm going out to the Memphis spring game next Friday night. So I'm going to try and attempt to uh, to get you to tag along with me. Uh, but we'll talk about that. It's it's next Friday, yeah. uh, Friday the 13th, actually. And so, but we'll we'll figure all that out later. It's on. not this coming week, right? This coming no, no, week. It's not this week. Gone. It's okay. not this weekend, but the next one. And so cool. Um, all right, well, let's, uh, let's go and wrap this thing up. You guys know what to do. Go check out the website, winningcureseverything.com. Uh, thank you for, uh, for checking this thing out on Facebook. If you have not already, like the Facebook page. Facebook page uh, is dot com slash winningcureseverything. You can follow us on Twitter at winningcures. You can also uh, subscribe to the podcast, iTunes, Stitcher, TuneIn, SoundCloud, Google Play. Subscribe, share it out. And hit that review button. Give us five stars. Tell everybody you know about it. Chris, we will talk again on Thursday. Enjoy the national championship, my friend. Yes, sir. See you, bud. Absolutely. Y'all be good.